All right, folks, welcome back. We're dealing with an incredibly important topic, and that's the education of our kids. All of our society, all of our legacy is wrapped up in the education of our children. And now, right now, due to the coronavirus, everyone is reluctant and sudden homeschool parents. There's some people who have said, I would never be a homeschool. Never say never. <laughs> and now people are homeschooling. You don't know when you can take that back. You've, yeah. you've joined the crazies. We did a video on this a while back. What, yeah, um, I think last summer. And we got an amazing response. Mm -hmm. What's been some of the response you've gotten? Just people with a lot of questions, people trying to think ahead, uh, planning out what their kids' education would look like. Mm -hmm. So today we want to encourage people who are forced into this and yeah. maybe some who are doing it and don't feel so forced and are kind of enjoying it. So we'll talk to everybody. Amazing. So we wanted to give you some general advice and some resources as you guys are just uh, in a kind of emergency mode of like, oh my goodness, what in the world do I do with these kids? Uh, and so way to go. And uh, we wanted to be able to do that. Uh, we're not the end all be all with homeschooling, no. but Miss Poet has definitely figured some stuff out. And our last video was a little bit more of a rescue our kids mm -hmm. from the state and some of the stuff that's happening and and kind of the product of a lot of the education system we're seeing we weren't very satisfied and there's also some real perks and then there's some honest objections people have whether it's um social awkwardness or yeah whatever. the same stuff everyone worries about right yeah. in last yeah. video oh it's so funny i you guess guys... everyone's gonna be awkward now because they're all isolated that's so right watch yourself it's already happening you are crazy <laughs> awkward people if you check out our last homeschool video we'll have links down below for you and at the end of this video as well if you want to check that out tons of really good stuff we've made a lot of bad or wrong decisions on our way to some better ones but at the beginning of the video we have like a skit and we're going through memes like homeschool memes oh, and they're yeah. really epic maybe we'll throw one up right now here's one that one's awesome i don't know what that's the gonna... class reunion mom why did you make name <laughs> tags yeah homeschool class <laughs> anyway reunion. you're gonna make fun a little but there's a lot of misinformation out there as well it can really be a blessing to you guys so i encourage you to check it out the education of our kids is an incredibly important deal i want to train up our kids in a real good way so they'll be forces for good in the world and affect warrior poets and so you guys uh have been thrust into that as well so uh first off what is some emergency advice you'd give for folks that are uh, in a little bit of a panic and are sudden homeschool parents. Yeah. I would just want to comfort everyone that this is not typical homeschooling for two reasons. Um, a friend helped me see this is that you're pretty much isolated right now. So you're missing out on all the benefits of homeschool co-op groups where you come together every week or twice a week for classes. You're missing out on playground dates. You're missing out on field trips. And just uh, community is a lot of times what really is the icing on the cake of homeschool. So sitting at home all day, just your family, like John said, it can be a blessing in some ways, but that is not a typical homeschool atmosphere. Um, the other thing is that if your kids were already enrolled in a school and now everyone's quarantined, you're having to do the work that the school has sent home. So whether it's online or workbooks, I'm not sure, but doing um, work and curriculum that someone else has selected for you is also not a part of homeschool because one of the freedoms we'll get to talking about in a minute is you can pick and choose what you want to study and how you study it. So I just wanted to reassure everyone that this is not typical homeschool because of the isolation and you're doing other curriculum that you haven't picked out. But um, we really just sympathize with everyone right now. So maybe you're working from home and you're trying to manage the kids' online schoolwork from their school and you're trying to do your job online. Um, maybe you've lost your job and you're searching right now. Our sympathies go out to you. Maybe you're a grandparent watching this who is keeping your grandchildren because their parents are working, right? So right. there's a lot of different variety in this situation. Everyone's doing quarantine homeschool. Right. Yeah. What are some uh, top stressors that they're about to greet? So when we start on this process a few years ago, it was, it was unthinkable that we would ever homeschool. Oh, it, yeah. Unthinkable that we would ever go that route. Now that we're here, it's 
really amazing, but now we wouldn't have it any other way. But what are they about to run into, whether it's kids not listening or not taking it seriously or getting stressed out or feeling like if you don't deal the right, you know, teach the right thing, your kids are going to, it's like a butterfly effect of disaster where you're all going to, they're they'll, going to end up on the streets. Yeah. If you fail at history today, they're going to end up on streets. Right. Way to go. You can ruin them forever. First of all, we're not that powerful, right? There is a sovereign God that we cannot ruin our children in one bad day of homeschool. So you have that grace. Um, but yeah, some of the stressors are what we're all feeling again, as a family that homeschools typically, but the isolation, um, we can't go out and meet friends. We can't go to co-op. So you're together, you're on top of each other, regardless the size of your house, even if you can spread out a little bit, you're still there. <laughs> you're cooking a lot more. You're doing a million dishes and laundry. You're trying to keep everyone um, safe and not sick and still trying to get groceries in. So there's all those factors whirling around right now that again is not typical homeschool. So I thought it would be fun to share three encouragements to everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Whether you've been, like we said, kind of forced into accidental homeschooling um, and you're like, get me out of this, that's okay. Or whether maybe you're thinking, hey, you know what? I think I could do this. Um, we're gonna talk to both uh, sides of the track here. So first to start out is that no matter what, you're qualified. So this is a huge question I get a lot is, am I qualified to teach my children? What would you say about that? Yeah, absolutely. Before I felt like, no, no, it needs to be a professional right. teacher. But when I think about it of like, all the skills and all the education that I really need to make it in life, I'm using. And so worst case scenario, my kids follow me around and as they see me doing stuff, this is this could be when they're 16, 17 years old and even younger, just kind of go to work with dad and yeah. shadow mommy, but you're gonna learn how to interact with people, how to pro solve problems. Yes. So you, you, reading is something you have to work on. So once you get Certain them reading- skills, yeah. If you're just able to have them fall in love with reading and put the right books under their nose, almost all of your job is done. So, no, you are qualified. You really are. You could do it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. This really helped quiet my fears when we were just starting out. A mentor of mine in homeschooling was saying, you are completely qualified because no one cares more about the education of your child than you. You care way more than their teachers at a school, any coaches, any uh, Sunday school teachers, I don't know, club and activity guides and coaches. You, the parent, care about their future more than anyone. So that one thing makes you qualified because you're going to put in the effort and you're gonna do your best because you are so affected by the outcome. Not, not to undervalue teachers at all. I simply say that to quiet the fears of the dedicated mom who thinks, I don't think I can do this. No, you can't. Yes, you, got you can. It. That's what I meant by that. We're not undervaluing teachers. Much needed and much appreciated. So the perks, three Ps, if we can talk about how to encourage you in this time of homeschool. Um, there's a lot of perks. You have permission to go deep in what matters and you can provide your own environment. Some days uh, you tell me there was just a hard homeschool day. Absolutely. And some yeah. days it's awesome. Can you speak to everyone out there on good and bad days? Yes. Um, and that is actually a great tie in also to the perks because you can redo uh, what you might have missed. You can start over tomorrow if you have a bad ad a bad attitude one day where you're just not feeling it. Maybe the kids aren't feeling it. Maybe someone just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That's okay. You can do less that day or maybe just do a fun activity that day. Um, I think the peace in your home, like you're always saying, is more of the goal. Yeah. Overall, your family atmosphere than checking off a block in your textbook that day. Do we want to meet the goals at the end of the year? Of course but you don't have to die on the hilltop if it's just a bad day. Get up and start again the next day, right? It's less about what you're teaching them and more about who you are on a daily basis. As mm -hmm. you can you can recreate who you are in them. Uh, so I think that's part of just living well, being well, and they really see that and of like, if you have a horrible temper, guess what? Without ever telling your kids to have a bad temper, they'll develop a bad temper because they're gonna learn it from how you are. So it's 
Sometimes it's less about what you do. Don't don't lose your peace and joy in the effort to tell them the data and the facts. Also, it's what you were just talking about, uh, learning attitudes, it's family discipleship. So you can really be a role model in your children's life because um, when they're sent away to school for the day, you're not the main adult in their life all day, right? So uh, you can also cater to different learning styles. So my younger child, he has to be moving. So the kinesthetic learning style is his. So if he can jump up and down, turn a circle, do the crab walk while he's reciting history facts, he's gonna remember it. So we cater to that. Um, and then John Lucas is more visual. So I, he likes pictures to be laid out and point to the pictures of what we're talking about and label it. Um, there was some author, I forget who it is, maybe it's John Rosemond or another that just talk about how terrible it is uh, that we put such a focus on making little boys, four, five, six, seven, be still all day long in the classroom and be like, man, it's really about learning how to interact with your environment and be social and mm -hmm. learn how to, uh, yeah, it, it's that kind of stuff. It's an exploratory trailblazing age. And so whereas we're at dinner, I expect you to sit still, eat your food and, yeah. you know, not Sometimes be a nuisance. And other times still. it's, it's yeah. go ahead and wiggle and interact and grow there'll be time to sit still right uh, later on yeah i love that exactly so the next thing i was going to say is permission you can you you can give yourself permission to um, study how you want to study and what you want to study and when you want to study what happens if someone's looking at this uh, they want to supplement or don't like the curriculum that they're dealing or don't have enough or maybe they want to think about if I was to keep going with homeschool longer, what kind of curriculum would that look like? I'm like, maybe it's fine when they're six, but what about when they're 15 mm -hmm. or something like that? What do you do for curriculum and what do you do for resources? Mm -hmm. We can put a lot of links below. And um, I've been in the homeschool game just four years now. So in a way I feel like, okay, I've got this, but my kids are young. So I look to people older than me for middle school grades, high school grades, and I see what they're doing and what they recommend. But I can put all those resources in the links, but just a huge generalization um, for that permission to go deep and what you want to and go deep and what matters is you can't read up out loud too much and you can't go outside and explore too much. Those two things, I think whatever the student's age is just processing good books, mm -hmm. letting that imagination go and following their interests and what they may want to study or focus in on. If they love reading, and you can just wind them up and set them loose on life, holy cow, they're gonna take over the world. And so family reading time at night's a big deal. And so I'll be reading and they're, you know, stacked on top of me and we're reading. And when there's a voice, I'll do the voices. You when make there's me sound do effects, voices that I'm like, I don't wanna And do. then they opened an old rickety door and it sounded like this. I'm always like the stage hand left. I get <laughs> put in charge of weird noises. Come on, do the test and this. And then an old woman See, said, and an old these. woman cackled, and it sounded. <laughs> I don't like being the stagehand. <laughs> well, then the, I'm the reader. I can't do it. Hey, I'm in charge of my own voices, dear. And the then day, there was a tiger roar. No, no last I'm night not doing was that. a. And in the distance, they heard the pounding of native drum. And it wasn't in the book. I just wanted to <laughs> hear. That's just a... bum, 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 no. Bum, bum. <laughs> anyway, we have a blast <laughs> in family reading <laughs> time, and so. It doesn't have to be a real big stressful thing. This could be a, a bit of an adventure that you all go on and now. But the read aloud, I love that you recommended that because maybe you're starting out and you're just overwhelmed with all the information. But if you want to stay in the homeschool game, I'm just going to call it the homeschool game. That sounds like uh, the lamest game. That's because it is. No, it's awesome. Um, flash that new meme. If you want to stay in the game long term, you cannot teach your child everything you want them to know or everything that you think they should know. You can't do it. So that love of reading is going to carry them to read books on their own time to explore um, maybe a topic like if they want to read 10 books about planes you don't have to do that for them they can read the 10 books about planes right yeah. so that love of learning really carries them through so much in their whole uh, education but so anyway have grace for yourself like we were saying good days and bad days don't expect too much especially if you're new at this environment in your home of okay 
We have to eat three meals a day here right now for quarantine, but I have to teach them and not kill them and not watch three movies. How are we gonna do this? Just have grace with yourself and them. Um, and also, here's a huge thing that really helped me starting out. Someone told me, don't try to replicate a school environment. It's not, um, you know, big box school. You only have your two, three, four, I don't know, five students, your children. So it's not gonna function like maybe the school you grew up in or the school your kids are at now. Maybe try to cut out uh, busy work. Like you don't have to print off, someone asked me this last night, do I have to print off 45 math sheets? Are there just too many activities? Yes, there are, right? right. So you wanna weed out the good to get to the best. That's good. Yeah. That'll preach. And someone asked me last week, how do you find time to do all the chores around the house when you're doing homeschool? The awesome thing <laughs> is that <laughs> now that our kids are six and seven, they've got chores. Oh yeah. So they're doing dishes, they're sweeping and mopping the floor, they're dusting, they're taking out laundry and trash. So put those kids to work. That's right. Right? Yeah. Because it's a family unit. Everyone needs to chip in. That's right. It's good. I'm having to teach some gunfighting classes around the country. I'm staying home. Oh my goodness. Uh, how about what should we be providing for our kids to fill, not really just fill the time, I don't mean that, but to help them grow by using their mind like Legos. Yeah. Um, if you have a daughter uh, sewing or drawing, painting, coloring, what kind of stuff should we be providing for them in this time? I don't know. You are homeschool extraordinary. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So whatever they're interested, they're interested in daddy makes videos. And so they borrowed a GoPro, the GoPro. and they have directed, yeah. produced and made videos yeah. and showed off. It's hilarious stuff. We've kept them of like, uh, when they were teaching martial arts and uh, self-defense, cutest video, video I've ever De seen. Yeah, de how do they say cute. it? Defense. Self-defense. They called it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, how to but defend yourself. that's what they were doing. And I'm thinking of like, man, they were really modeling presentation skills, oratorical yeah, ability. We were like, Where they did were that demoing come? different things mm -hmm. and, and other. Th and I'm like, this is pretty great. Of like, <laughs> I'm taking notes. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's good. yeah. Anyway, I heard a mom say last night that her son was very involved in chess, online chess, and yeah. he had done chess tournaments and she had never, you know, fully given it a lot of support. But now those critical thinking skills are just yeah. irreplaceable. That yeah. just came from his interest in chess. So whether it be GoPro videos or chess or art or sewing or maybe they're getting an idea for starting a business of some kind, like lemonade stand or selling cookies That's or good. walking dogs. Like you can just create that environment where um, they're allowed to passionately yeah. pursue what interests them. Yeah, we just opened them bank accounts. And so that now they have bank accounts and they're learning about saving and percentages so that we know what to give away and what to keep. Um, our oldest is playing chess. Our youngest is still at checkers, but anyway. Uh, you can have fun. fun with this, and I think there's some silver linings here in the midst of being forced to be homeschoolers. It may be something that fits better than you'd like to admit, but thank you so much for leading us and helping us out with some cool stuff. And guys, oh, yeah. if you found this to be a good resource, uh, don't be afraid to share it on different social media platforms. Uh, I mean, you change the trajectory of your kids' lives and everyone that interacts with them, and so... Um, this may be a good fit for you. So uh, guys, you wanna close this out? You wanna say something? Just our thoughts and prayers are going out to everyone and you know, neighbors, family, friends, and their neighbors and their family and their friends of how everyone is affected during this time. People, like we said, people working from home, grandparents keeping grandkids or people losing their jobs. Just, um, we are here to support with any questions that might help you in this quarantine right. homeschool time. That's right. So, all right, guys. Yeah. Make sure you uh, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to all like, comment down below on some stuff that works well for you. And uh, make sure you visit the links down below so you can check out our other homeschool videos as well. See you guys.